again, good evening. We'll start off with the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. meeting go. It's always fun to have the donation part more especially or more for me anyway the recognitions that we get to do. So I'll let you start Absolutely. off with those honors. Well I think we're going to start off first with Laura Norris's group. So if you'd like to stand and introduce and share this is our National Rural School Academic Team and I'll let her tell a little bit about it and then I, I have a few words at the end. Okay. <clears throat> okay so this is two-thirds of the team that's going to be going to nationals in a couple weeks. Uh, we been uh, tied for fourth place out of 13 teams in our uh, area competition uh, for the varsity and the JV team came in third out of six teams. Uh, so we're very proud of that. And because of how we placed at area, we actually qualified for the nationals. And um, so that's where we'll be going. Uh, we also competed at the state tournament um, of Ethan and Reagan, and uh, we're runners up there. So we're really excited, and uh, we're looking forward to competing in Chicago. And could you share just very briefly, like the format? I thought that was pretty interesting, but I, I think that you deserve the honor of capturing what that looks like. But it seems like a really interesting format that the students go through. Okay. Uh, so what Quiz Bowl is? is um, it's kind of like a game show academic competition where the questions, there are 16 questions per match and the teams actually have to buzz in to answer. Each person, like one person has to buzz in, it's totally individual at that point. If they get the question right, then the entire team gets a chance to answer what's called bonus questions, which then are only for that particular team and they can collaborate on those. Uh, so there's 16 of those types of questions, and then there is also um, a couple lightning rounds which are themed, and there's 10 questions each that um, they have 60 seconds to try to answer as many as they can based on the clues given for that list. Thank you. Thank you all for your <laughs> Is Mr. Trotter, the, are you the only senior? <coughs> Yes. And you're going to University of Jacksonville, correct? Correct, yes. Congratulations to all of you and well done. And if I may, Laura shared earlier that funding, they wanted to do some fundraisers. It's um, anytime there are special privileges, there are also, there's a cost that goes with that. And we did have a private donor who helped offset the, the cost of the trip, the hotels, the meals. They asked that they remain anonymous, but to know that uh, when, when they called and said, is this, is this for real? And we said yes, he immediately um, donated to the cause. So he knows who he is and I wish that I could, I could share that, but in respect we won't. But thank you to those in the community who continue to support our schools. Congratulations and well done. Next we have Thomas Rohr. Is Thomas here? No, Thomas didn't come. Mr. Strasser is home with the flu that's been going around the district. But if I may, I just want to read briefly that Thomas was recognized, um, let me see here, on being named a 2018 uh, scholar. Um, it was for part of their academic achievement. This year, 275 seniors were nominated, and I think it was narrowed down to 90 in the state. And Thomas is one of 90 who earned that prestigious award. So just wanted to recognize and thank Thomas for his hard work as well. Well, even though he's not here, we can certainly give sure. him a round of applause. And we'd like to recognize Mr. Shane Halls and Ms. McKee as cheer sponsors. I know they've had a great deal of success. Um, Mr. Strasser noted that they um, set the standard for area schools in regards to cheer. The, it's been an increase in the cheer squad um, through the elementary levels and the participation that, that we are seeing there. 
But Lucas, if you two will please, I know that you've had a lot of college success and I think maybe just a recent division um, yeah, Division One success story. Um, the um, Agnew girl. Alexis Agnew. Alexis Agnew, but um, other division, mainly just three division. So, um, just excited to um, new chapter in my life, and very blessed with great other coaches that are co-coaches, and um, thank the parents. So, seventeen years. Thirteen. Thirteen. So. It was really neat. One of the things that I saw um, was when the varsity and JV cheerleaders would come over to the middle school for the middle school events. And when those athletes would run out of the gym and see the high school they are representing cheering them on, you could really see that on their faces. So it was a neat um, contribution throughout the district, what you two did for cheer. So thank you. And I want to specifically say, I know I did a lot of the weight room in the summer, and Mr. Shane Holtz always had his athletes there, and it was impressive. Uh, it's an un appreciated endeavor at times so thank you both and very I, much i think it was under your leadership that we got the mail squad was it not was that um, yeah that we, build? we brought it back mm -hmm. it was there one time and then kind of went away <coughs> so thank you, thank you. And then Charlie, if you don't mind standing and introducing Charlie with Jump Rope for Heart. And I know Charlie does a lot of endeavors across the district in regards to physical fitness, but also lifetime physical fitness and getting students involved and really learning to love that and having it become a lifelong physical activity. So if you could share some of your success from this year at Little. Yes, our school collected $10,500 this year, which was a school record for us. And these are four of our six highest girls and boys. We have Annie Horbin, we have Ava Thomas, and Ava's gonna tell you how much we have collected since 1981 when I came here. 206,206 dollars. That's awesome. <laughs> Madison Coria, and we have Aubrey Wilson. And we did some very special things that our children who raised um, $50 or more, we got to go swimming and we got to go bowling this year. So it was kind of a, a fun incentive and kept them out doing something exciting. Can, do one of you mind sharing what Jump Rope for Heart is? Can somebody kind of explain that to us? Go ahead, Aubrey. Um, jump Rope for Heart is... And you raise you you jump rope for other people's hearts, and I jump rope for my grandma, great grandpa's heart. Thank you for sharing. Yes, thank you for inviting. Oh, us. absolutely. We should have brought you all jump ropes. Oh, you <laughs> <laughs> got the short little chubby weaver kid involved. But that says a lot about what you did. I did jump it. Well, thank you for inviting no, thank us. Thank you for your hard work. Okay. Awesome. We have a couple that have to go to gymnastics. Okay. <laughs> All right. They're not, they just don't sit around. So 10,000 this year and 206,206 total since you've been here. I mean, okay. I know you're only 29, so. <laughs> kind of. Well done. Thank you. Now, everybody that's been recognized, you're certainly welcome to stay for the board meeting. However, we give you this opportunity. If you'd like, you can stand up without uh, looking odd walking out the door. You're certainly welcome to stay, of course. But thank you all for being here, and well done to all of you. Thank you, thank you all thank you. for coming out. <laughs> I just wanted to mention real quick while we shuffle them out, uh, since we're, we recognize Charlie and his accomplishments, she uh, has been doing a lot with our uh, swimming down at our lower levels. And this year we actually were able to get first graders in there. And I went and visited a couple of her classes uh, while they were in there. And I'm going to tell you, you talk about life experiences. You know, to get some of these first grade kids may not have an opportunity to get into the pool, into a pool or into water. Um, 
for a long time in their life. I know, you know people in the high school who've never swam before. So uh, she's getting every kid in the water. Uh, they're enjoying it. It's a safe activity for them. Um, she's got a lot of help with Marilyn Thayer. And just I just want to say thanks for, uh, for continuing to, to work in the, the younger kids and, and give them those opportunities because we all know you know, swimming's a real important life skill and uh, getting, them, getting them going early has been really good. So she's done a fabulous job with that. Thank you. Sorry for jumping in there. I was, was going to piggyback on it, but. I'm going to go get cough medicine. <laughs> Thank you. That will move on to consent items. As far as the minutes of the March 12, 2018 regular board meeting, are there any additions, subtractions, <coughs> concerns? And unless there's any objection, uh, is it okay if we put all these together for the approval? Any objection from anyone on that? Any concerns, additions, deletions, corrections to minutes of the April 2nd, 2018 study session? Any additions, deletions, concerns, or corrections to the minutes of the April 2nd, 2018 Board of Finance meeting? In that case, is there a motion to approve the consent items? So moved. Second. Motion made by Jenny, second by Sandy. All in favor of approving the three items under consent items, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Section C, financial report. Double duty. Uh, tonight we've got uh, approval of claims docket 13-126 through 13-317 that totals $975,447.07. We have three payrolls. The March 16, 2018 payroll totaled $424,021.60. The March 30th payroll of 18 uh, totaled $415,613.99. And then the April 13th of 2018 payroll totaled $316,170.92. March was our three payroll month, so we actually had a March 2nd payroll that was approved last month at the board meeting as well. So yeah, that'll be reflected on the funds reports that I'll report on as well tonight. Um, so our general fund started with a cash balance of $608,208.84. We had $990,200.92 worth of receipts. Expenses for the month totaled $1,341,244.73. That left us a balance of $257,165.03. Um, and again, this was a three payroll month, so that's why expenses um, are a lot higher than other months typically are. Debt service fund, we started with 200, I'm sorry, $2,212,759.81. We had $8,049.90 worth of receipts. No expenses for the month, so we had an ending balance of $2,220,809.71. Capital Projects Fund, we started with $846,765.24. Our receipts uh, for the month were $37,142.63. Expenses for the month were $125,050.54, leaving us an ending balance of $758,857.33. So we still had um, a little more Duke Energy credits um, for upgrades to our systems um, as reflected on the receipts. And again, uh, we pay our technology department out of t uh, this capital projects fund. So that was an increase as well to expenses. <coughs> Let's see, transportation fund, we started with $937,191.28. Receipts totaled $2,598.97. Expenses for the month were $80,435.32, leaving us an ending balance of $859,354.93. In the 
And last but not least is bus replacement fund. We started with $142,317.99. We had 664 dollars 54 worth of receipts. No expenses for the month, uh, leaving us an ended balance of $142,982.53. Any questions on the funds report? Do you have a battle note off the top of your head how many three payroll months we have? We have two in each month. So the first one is always um, nine times out of ten, it's March, and then the other one is September. Okay. Just trying to Sure. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for Val? I have a comment, Fred. Mm -hmm. I, I do appreciate both Jada and Val when I have a question when I'm going through and I'm like, what about this claim number right here <coughs> and how prompt they are in getting back and I appreciate that and that transparency that's available to anyone that they're I know I didn't say so. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. No, I, we appreciate the scrutiny. That's, that's what <laughs> it's, it's for. It's always Friday when you see the three payment see. months, but I know one of our goals at board, we've set a limit where we want to try to get that figure up so we can cover a lot of our operating yeah. expenses. But that always is one of those, wow. It's a, oh, it's a three payment month. So. Mm -hmm. Um, is there any objection to approving all pieces of the financial report at once, or would you rather do them separately? Any objections to that? In that case, items one, two, and three of the financial report, is there a motion to approve those as given? So moved. Motion made by second. Steve, second by Tom. All in favor of approving financial report uh, numbers one through three, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. <coughs> Student and stakeholder focus. Donations. Uh, the donations are presented to us tonight. Again, the anonymous donor who shall remain anonymous. Thank you again for the donation made for the team going to nationals there. Um, also, Zai Iota Z. Is it Zai? It's Z, right? Zai. Zai is a Zai. I was in the Zai. fraternity, but it wasn't. Zai <laughs> Iota Zai. $50 for Columbia Reading Counts. Psi Iota Zai, $50 for Riddle Reading Counts. Psi Iota Zai, $50 for Middle Reading Counts. And Psi Iota Zai, $50 for High Reading Counts. Also, the Redchester Kiwanis Club, $150 for any needs, all schools. The Northern Indiana Community Foundation, $1,500 for the high school quiz bowl team. Grace United Methodist Church, $642.03 to Riddle Elementary School. The Weaver family, Tom and Jill, specifically Tom and Jill, don't confuse them with me. <laughs> Rocks for Riddle, all elementary students for upcoming Positive Rock Project. And Tidewater Tax Service, $100 for RHS Prom. Are there any additions to that? I, I need to look to Candy, yeah. right? <laughs> she's, <laughs> okay. she's my trust. We're good on that one. We're good tonight? The, uh, the last months, we had the Knights of Columbus on there, um, and we had it kind of pending. Uh, the donation we have received, Columbia has received that donation, and. Uh, they're purchasing 25 pairs of shoes for students. So That's Knights of Columbus. Knights of Columbus. We, we actually re uh, formally recognized it, but we did actually receive that um, here in the last 72 hours, and um, we are working on getting those shoes for those kids. So we, we thank them for, for that donation as well. And to all our donors, as always, thank you very much for what you do for our school system. There's a lot of people that do it anonymously, and nobody does it for the credit. We certainly appreciate it as a school system. So thank you to all those donors. Is there a motion to approve the donations as presented? So moved. Motion made by Sandy. Second. Second by Stacy. All in favor of approving the donations as given, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Overnight field trips. We have three field trips. Um, one, the first is the FFA soil judging. It is an overnight field trip to the National Land Judging Contest. It is one that they qualified for. Um, that team, uh, per board approval, would be traveling to Oklahoma City, Oklahoma to participate in the national competition. It is uh, an honor that the students have received before in prior years, um, and so Justin is asking for permission to take this team out and complete their, their competition and see how they do at the nationals. Do we want to approve these separately? Is there any objection to her reading these all and doing them as one, or would you rather them, anybody have any objection to that, or would you rather single them out? If you'd like to go through all of them then. Sure. If there is, and if it, there is an objection raised, certainly we'll vote on them separately then. 
The second one is the out-of-state national championship tournament. It not only is it an overnight trip, it's also out-of-state, and that's to Chicago. That would be Laura Norris and the group that we just recognized this evening and their trip to Chicago. And again, um, much of that money has already been raised, and, and those expenses should be paid through different donations and a fundraiser that they did. And then the Cook Nuclear Power Plant is not an overnight trip. It is an out-of-state trip. Uh, where Laura is asking to take her, uh, I know it's a chemistry class, to the Cook plant uh, to see how electrical engineer or electrical energy is produced and have the students experience that firsthand. And I believe that's in Bridgman, Michigan. And again, that one is not overnight, but rather an out of state day trip. Any questions or concerns for Jana about any of the three overnight field trips? Again, any objections to voting on all three of those at once? In that case, is there a motion to approve the overnight field trips? So moved. Motion made by Steve. Second. Second by Jenny. All in favor of approving the overnight or out of state field trips, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Information and analysis approval of sale, destruction of surplus items. Sure. Just to note, we continue to dig deep in those closets and storage areas and want to thank the administrative team and teachers for helping us do that. Currently, we have some auction items on our website right now that Scott and his team have helped us load onto that website and that auction closes on the 19th of this month. But this would be some new items, a lot of things um, that Mrs. McMillan is cleaning out at the high school in regards to some choir department as we get ready to look at renovating Isaac's nodding his head does that need cleaned out there <laughs> <laughs> to start looking at that as we begin uh, the the um, work around redoing the high school auditorium in those areas and so it's a listing of items that that uh, department has come up with as well as some miscellaneous other items that we'll continue to dig deep on but are no longer being used anywhere in the district I just this is a comment not a criticism i trust lisa i mean i'm sure she is on it it just seems like there's a lot of pianos on there well and i think that that's something that we constantly get phone calls and people wanting to donate pianos uh, to the school because okay. nobody I, else wants them and i think that sometimes, <laughs> they, like they, yeah, sometimes yeah. they show up on the doorstep and people <laughs> donate them and so there yeah, are two at the auction we were here last fall. They were. And I think, didn't it go for like a dollar or five dollars a yeah. piece? It was Less really than $10 sad. A piece, yeah. yeah. Those things really must weigh 7,000 pounds. Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I had to move in one time. I think we would more in a house. And I think <laughs> we've got the baby grand piano. And then I think a lot of it now is done electronic keyboards and those types of things. So. Like I said, I certainly trust Lisa on that. It just seemed like a lot of pianos. So. <laughs> oh, we sometimes they just pull up the front door. <laughs> Any questions for Jan about the surplus uh, equipment <coughs> request? Still no treasures. Mm -hmm. no. Well, we keep digging through those tunnels. I know. Been through the lockbox, been through the tunnels. Yeah. Still digging for yeah, your treasure. Yeah, the lockbox <laughs> So an auction time period yet? Or? Um, as soon as um, these are approved tonight, then we'll work um, with Scott. It takes, it takes more time than you think to get pictures uploaded <laughs> and, and coordination and, and uh, <laughs> exactly. So probably a couple of days. Probably a good week and a half. Yeah, during that iced up. But there's a link on our website that you can just periodically check if it's on there. So yeah. and in, through, in the interest of that, since it's still snowing in April, can we get the snow picture off our website and get a green grass one over there? Maybe that's a problem. Maybe yeah, I, it's like the uh, horseshoe she had in her office. I said, we can't lay that down. It's going to be set up so their luck doesn't run out of it. So. <laughs> Is there a motion to approve the sale or destruction of the surplus items? So moved. Motion made by Jenny. Second. Second by Sandy. All in favor of approving the sale or destruction of the surplus items, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Approval of the school handbook. Right now we're going to look at Columbia and Riddle's handbook. They are two that still do hard copies and then next month we will do high school and middle schools. Those are ones that we load onto our website. So we're trying to get ahead and sometimes if you order before a certain deadline and order so many you get a reduced cost. So we're trying to be diligent about that which is why we're bringing the... All right Jason, you'll be honest with me. Is my bald head blocking the screen? Or Negative. Okay. Go. All right, last, uh, last year we had seven uh, changes. 
Uh, we've amped up our production. We're up to 37 changes for this one. So <laughs> you guys can all go to page 14. We'll get started on that. Um, 14, you'll find a uh, change in the um, grading scale, K through two. Uh, we had previously um, two different grading scales for the, um, I don't know if you got to go down this one. It's highlighted, Scott, you'll see it. Try page 12. Yeah, you can see it. I saw it. Oh, okay. Keep going, you're up just a little bit. So at this rate, if we do one per minute, 37 of them, we'll be done here. With <laughs> now we, uh, we just simply, um, we, we had two different uh, grading scales in our building. Uh, second grade used a different one than first and second grade. And it all boiled down to second grade uh, wanting that excellent piece in there. And uh, we all agreed as a grade, at all grade levels to uh, just uh, utilize a, a single school um, uniform code just to, to help the, uh, with the ESN and U help with the parents, you know, not having that change going from first grade to second grade, starting to see ease, confusion, and stuff like that. So uh, that's the primary change for Columbia. We also added in on uh, page 23, just our Alice language, which is our school intruder training that we do throughout the corporation. So we, we put that in there, and when we do one of those uh, drills, we also send that information home to, to parents as well, but we wanted to add that into to the handbook. And then lastly, uh, on page 29, you'll see just our clarifying language for two hour delays on Wednesday, uh, just when school start time for Columbia and Riddle. But, uh, since, uh, you can that's how many phone calls we get yeah, on Wednesday because, and yeah. it's a two hour delay and what that means. Start and we'll we'll work on on pushing that information out some other other methods as well. But we wanted to add that there. But with the send on RTC for here for a parent, they can hear it on TV. If a school starts at 8:30 on Wednesday and it's a two-hour delay, school will start at 10:30 at Riddle in Columbia. Is that correct? 10:15. 10:15. If, if 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 it's a two-hour delay, uh, every, well, any day of the week it's 10:15 at, at Riddle in Columbia. Regardless, because, any day. Yeah. No 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 late start on Wednesday and a two-hour delay. I, mean, I know you'll push it out, but we have our partners here. We might as well use yep. that because I'm sure you know how I'm one of those people you have to tell six or seven times and I'll still don't get it. So. And the only other thing I'd like to mention, just on our cell phone policy, um, Luke and I are still kind of working through this, but we will likely add the word watch somewhere in our cell phone policy because we are starting to see the smart watches that work like cell phones. So it's That's not a, listed in there, but. You have second graders with smart watches? Yes, sir. Good for them. So we're having to incorporate that into our policies. That's, that's all I got. Any questions, comments for Mr. Snyder or Mr. Bernanke? I think they're amazing. Doing a good job. We've got a good team. Yeah. I appreciate, thank you both Jason and Luke, going over the changes. Um, and this is not... Um, any faults of yours by any means, but I, <laughs> I read through it and I'm like, I don't see any changes. And we realized this last year too. I don't know if it's because it's Word or whatever. If you see it on an, on an iPad or a phone, there's no highlights. So since we're going to do high school, middle school, if there's any, if it's not too much extra work, it would be nice to have like a one page synopsis of the, I mean, just cut and paste what those changes were or maybe even just say what page. Mm -hmm. I, or I could try and find another device to read it on, but I don't want you to print out the whole thing or anything like that. Well, if I know the team well enough, Mr. Haas is here, which means Mr. Strasser just got delegated for it. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell my S word, please. <laughs> we'll work on that, we'll work on that. Thank you, but, but, I, but I agree, it was, yeah, because like all those pages are like that. Any, for, any more questions for the two principals? Thank you, too, for staying on top of it. Because if you do just a few changes every year, you know that it's a workable document. You're, you are using that document, too. But so well, I like the consistency in the grades, too. I don't know if that translates, and this is Mrs. Vance's shtick <laughs> here. I don't know if it translates from K through 2 to 3rd, 4th, and 5th. But I love the consistency there so parents can know going from one place to another that they have that and what it means. In that case, is there any more questions? 
Is there a motion to approve the handbook changes at Columbia and Riddle Elementaries? Motion to approve the handbook changes. First uh, motion made by Tom. Second, Second by Steve. All in favor of approving the school handbook changes at Riddle and Columbia, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. The Peterson Wagner and Perkins contract for services. Would you like to go through those changes? Uh, yes, we've talked about them several times at study sessions. Um, the contract is for the, the firm, uh, myself and Rachel aren't uh, working with the board. There's a small increase in the monthly uh, retainer of uh, $90 a month, which is about a 4.75% increase over the 2016 rates. There was no change in 2017. The uh, some slight realignment of duties and responsibilities that we've discussed uh, having to do mostly with disciplinary matters if and when uh, it's within the retainer and outside the retainer and uh, I believe that uh, resolves the issues. And Mr. Wagner, just to clarify since like I said the Sentinel and RTC4 here, we pay Peterson, Wagner, and Perkins whether you bring one attorney or three. So right. we're not paying for you and for Rachel, we are paying for the firm to represent us, correct? That's correct. Part of, our, part of our educational process, uh, Rachel, you know, she's now been here eight years, so she's got quite a bit of experience, but uh, she's been practicing law for eight years, but uh, educational law is still a little bit unique, and so uh, um, a lot of exposure is good for, for her as well as for me. Any questions of Mr. Wagner about the contract? Mm -hmm. Is there a motion to approve the contract with Peterson, Wagner, and Perkins as our law partners through this year? So moved. Motion made by Sandy. Second. Second by Jenny. All in favor of approving the Peterson, Wagner, and Perkins contract, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. I know that's a question I've had in the past. I want to make sure we clarify that. So. Sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, faculty and staff focus, personnel report. Oh, yeah, add one in on me. I just looked at that. <laughs> <clears throat> no. All right, so. Resignations. Kathy Stockberger, South, or high school, directed study instructional assistant, effective the last day of school. Cassandra Boggs, Columbia Halftime PE and Halftime Instructional Assistant, last day April 6th, 2018, excuse me. Jessica Hoffman, RMS Guided Instruction Supervisor, effective March 30th, 2018. Is it Cassie or Casey? Camp. Casey, Casey Camp. Kemp. Casey? Casey Kemp, Riddle Instructional Assistant, effective April 2nd, 2018. And <coughs> Teresa Mollenkup, High School Instructional Assistant Nurse and Life Skills, effective year end. Retirement. Pat Mellinger, Director of Special Services, effective at the end of the 2017-2018 contract. And she's grinning dead. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to read through these and we'll let people speak. And I know too I want to have speak and now I just found out I have a third. So. <laughs> Kathy Ad a reassignment. Kathy Adams from Administration Staff to RMS, RHS, ISA position at RMS. Jessica DeVees from Columbia Instructional Assistant to Part-Time PE Teacher, Kindergarten and part-time instructional assistant at Columbia, <coughs> FMLA, or Family Medical Leave Act, Joanna Johnson, Columbia, intermittent leave for from, from approximately February 23rd, 2018 through April 20th, 2018. Julie Calvert, admin, intermittent leave from approximately 329 of 2018 through 429 of 2018. Deanna Vandenbosch, ASE instructional assistant, leave from April 2nd, 2018 through April 6th, 2018. Athletic coaching recommendations, Nate Basham, middle school track assistant coach. Tristan Wilson and Bryce Roberts, middle school track assistant coach, sharing one stipend. Bryn Dirks, varsity cheerleading coach. Aaron Leap, girls head volleyball coach. Brian Jennings, girls head basketball coach. For spring intercession, Bryce Roberts, RMS. Summer intercession at the high school, Clint Gardner Mathematics. And Jesse Atkinson for English. Summer school, high school, Katie Felke Health, 
Amy Blackburn Health, Brian Hooker, PE, Charlie Schwank, PE, Terry Screeton, Algebra 1, Tony Stasiak for Government, Trevor Brown in English, Joel Lowe in Cabinet Making. Can I take that class? No. <laughs> I bet it's pretty neat. And SAE, Justin Pearson. Uh, I'm going to defer to you on this one, Tom. I'm going to assume you'll want me to yeah. separate Charlie out. I don't, it's certainly your call. I just yeah, assume that's fine. what you like. In that case, are there any questions for Mrs. Vance about any of the items on the personnel report? You added. Oh, I need to add Kayla Seacrest. That was a second one. I apologize. That's a there's a question on Kathy Adams. Does somebody else pick up her duties, or what's the Kathy, situation? Now? Yeah, Kathy is still doing her regular duties. The AS or the ISA room over at the middle school is one where some days there are maybe one or two students in there. Other days it may be um, a little bit larger. But she's able to do those duties there. She comes over to the central office the last hour of the day. Pat Led is running the mail route right now for her, and part of it is we are so short on um, substitute teachers, good instructional assistants. We've got a lot of openings, and so it was a way to try to get through the last portion of this year. And she's able to continue her duties there. Pat's helping pick up some, and then she comes over to the central office. So this is a temporary change? Correct. Envision we'll okay. reevaluate and forward. Any other questions? And on, we have an addition, another resignation. Kayla Secret, sixth grade special education teacher, effective the year end. Are there any further questions for Mrs. Vance? Any questions for our admin team in the audience on some of the higher? I was going to do that. I didn't know if we want to take the vote first or not, but we can certainly do that. It might influence the vote. <laughs> Mr. Merckx, would you like to introduce your two new hires? Don't start that, Ted. We've got a small crowd. Sure. I'm, I'm happy to be here. I have two uh, varsity uh, coaching candidates, uh, Aaron Leap for volleyball. Uh, Aaron's a Rochester grad, uh, played collegiately at, at Ball State. She's been in our program, um, so it's a welcome addition. Uh, Brian Jennings for basketball comes from a basketball um, family. He's coached at a lot of levels. and. Uh, Excited to bring both in at the same time and looking forward to some good things. And what we'll do is we'll take a vote and we'll let uh, them introduce themselves that way. That's okay. Sure. Any questions of Mr. Marks? In that case, is there a motion? Okay. Well, I've got to keep track of this. We're going to. Is there a motion to accept the uh, personnel report with the exception of Charlotte Swank? Summit. Motion made by Jenny. <laughs> Second by Sandy. <coughs> All in favor of approving the personnel report with the exception of Charlie Schwank, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Is there a motion to approve Charlie Schwank in the personnel report? Second. Motion made by Stacy. Second that. Second made by Steve. All in favor of approving Charlie Schwank in the personnel report, please signify by raising your right hand. Motion carries five to zero. All right, I will let you get to your coaches, Mr. Marks, but first, Mrs. Mullinger is going to retire, and she has a lot of time at the corporation, so I'd like her to be able to address or talk if she wants to, or she doesn't have to. I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to serve Rochester Community Schools. That's all I have to say. I'm very Congratulations. Grateful. On May um, 21st, right before our board meeting next month, we'll be inviting all of our retirees in and celebrating that bittersweet moment with all of them. So we'll probably start that around 5.30 and have light refreshments and have all of them in and invite the public and, and be able to honor them at that time. How long has Pat been here? Would you like to share your career, Pat? How many years have you been here? I've been in education for 45 years. Um, I've been at Rochester for most of those years. Short time in Virginia. Um, and uh, I was a director coordinator at Peru for a few years. So. But most of my time has been here in Rochester. I was born and raised here and started my career at Riddle Elementary School in a special education classroom. I'm not going to spend any time with those grandchildren at all. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and new one on the way. Yeah. But you know that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a personal connection with Pat and thank her so much for her professionalism and her care and her heart for students, all students that we've seen throughout the years. So thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you for your service, Pat. Seems mighty small for 45 years in education, but I guess that's the best time to do is thank you. Not a gold watch or anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Coach Lee, would you like to? For, uh, for 
for the that May twenty first. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> Pat. But uh, we'll we'll uh, we got some short stories yeah. to shoot. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's better not. Really. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Coach Lee, congratulations. Welcome aboard. Okay. Anything you'd like to say? Uh, I just want to thank you for the opportunity to continue to be part of this program that is very special to my heart uh, for a lot of different reasons. Um, and I'm just really excited and I can't wait to, to start making new traditions and carry on old traditions and hopefully keep the success rolling. We certainly wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Coach Jennings, welcome aboard. Thank you very much. Uh, again, appreciate the opportunity. Uh, Rochester Lady Zebras have had a a lot of success in the basketball program and just looking to try to continue that success. And to you, congratulations, welcome aboard, and best of luck to you. Thank you. Next on the faculty and staff focus, approval of Brad Carter's contract. Correct. Um, Brad Carter uh, proposing that we move him to director of facilities. Brad Carter brings to us 22 years experience as a director. Um, he brings a lot of licenses <coughs> to the table as well. He's um, licensed in HVAC systems, boilers. He's an Indiana asbestos inspector, which has been very helpful, especially as we move forward through some of these projects. He has his pesticide license, uh, playground inspection license, which I think that Luke is excited about because that, <laughs> that helped confirm the need for new uh, equipment there at Riddle. He is also going through IASBO training, which is very, very helpful to our success at Central Office in stabilizing that capital projects. All right, now education is a, <laughs> uses a lot of acronyms, oh. IASBO, <laughs> Indiana Association. Association of School and Business Officials. Thank you. No problem, I just wanna make sure people yeah. know, because I, I know some of them, but some of them I wonder you're correct. too. You're correct, you're uh, correct. He also has brought the rebate process to us in regards to large projects in the LED um, projects are proposing a two-year contract. One is this current year, and then we're going to into the 2018-2019 contract. I didn't go back and look, Janet. Is that salary for the our current year? Is that what we had already, <coughs> or you, for year one? No, this would be this an would adjustment be to the an year one, taking to his, over all okay. duties, and then going into <coughs> year one and having all duties. Okay. Any other questions for Jana about the director of facilities position? <coughs> in that case, is there a motion to approve Brad Carter for the director of facilities position in his contract? Motion to approve Brad Carter's contract. Motion made by Tom. Second. Second by Steve. All in favor of <coughs> Brad Carter's contract, please signify by raising the right hand. Motion carries six to zero. Superintendent business. Just a couple of quick things after school this evening, we were able to spend time over at Riddle meeting um, the contractors for the HVAC project. Got to meet a lot of the subcontractors. There were a lot of familiar faces at that table, at least for Val and Scott and myself. Some of them were, I'm sure, new to Luke, but it was comforting to know that some of those subcontractors are gonna be the same that helped with the Columbia project and the high school project. So it was a really good meeting. Um, I think that Luke finally got that piece of information that all of the teachers and everybody are looking for for the classrooms and when, when that will take place, but just gently reminding him and others that it's not in stone. Sometimes we run into problems and sometimes we move forward, but it was a great pre-construction meeting. Terry and his crew did a really nice job. I'm really excited for a program that Oscar is willing to help start at Rochester Middle School and want him to speak just very briefly about Champions Together. And I just launched this in the last week and to me this is a very endearing project that I'm so proud we're able to take on. Yeah, so Champions Together is a program that is sponsored by the Special Olympics and the IHSAA. And so we kicked that off last week by what they call partners, which would be your stu student athletes who uh, partner with the uh, Special Olympic uh, students and they become the athletes at that time. They met in our PBIS letter lounge. They went down there and played some double shot basketball and some ping pong and some video games and did some coloring and things to get it kicked off. Our goal is at our last home track meet for the middle school for those students this year to run one or two events with their partners 
And then at the end of the year at our PBIS celebration, last day of school, um, we're looking at an intramural basketball game that'll just be in-house for this year. Hopefully to open up to the public in the years down the road. Um, we have Lee Lonzo is the guy who organizes it for Indiana. He, his best suggestion was get a group of students, step out of their way and let them do their magic. And so that's what we've done is we asked students to fill out an application. They filled it out, they turned it into a group of teachers and we've got five from each grade level. So it's a sustainable program um, as it gets going. So we've got five eighth graders who've really grabbed the bull by the horns and gotten it going. Um, the goal is to become a banner school through Special Olympics. That way we can have a big celebration and the young man, his name's leaving me, just spoke to our corporation at the beginning of the year. We'll come back and they'll lead a convocation with our student body at the beginning of next year. Um, and we'll receive our banner. And to do that, we have to raise $750. So this week we have the corporation-wide jeans week, which is the easiest way to raise money <laughs> in our school corporation. Um, the students came up with that idea. And so we presented that to the teachers and staff and they're wearing jeans this week to help support us. And then the students have come up with some other great ideas for fundraising. Um, so we've done what Lee suggested and stepped back and it's amazing what our kids come up with. And so it's gonna be a special thing. I know you guys remember when Mrs. Moore's daughter shot the basketball during, you know, a year ago during sixth grade basketball, how it touched everybody in that gym. We're hoping to kind of spread that throughout our student body population through with the help of Special Olympics. Thank you. To the, and Candy plays an integral role in that as well. I know a lot of a lot of work comes her way as well, but thank you for embracing that. That's huge for our district. So thank you. One of nineteen schools doing this throughout the state? Seventeen. Seventeen, well, 17 middle schools and we're the lone middle school who doesn't have a school above <coughs> us who's already had it for three years, so It'll be interesting. We're kind of that pilot school as Shirley Wright, who's the director of IMLEA, always likes to lean on Janus Corporation. <laughs> That's leaning on me to get things rolling like that. What that says to me is you're starting to call it down to Adam, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Adam. That's a Adam. <laughs> The other things I've mentioned briefly, just and we'll send information out to all of our media sources and just want to thank Pat. We've had a couple of moments personally in my office and want to thank you publicly, but some of those others were safe for in the office and I don't want to get emotional, but we'll be honoring all of our retirees on May 21st and again we'll send all of that information out but are looking forward to that evening at 530 and as Jason said, we have some fun stories to share so we'll make sure that we do that. And then just continue to check out our website. We have those auction items going. Um, I know that pretty soon we'll be releasing those summer registration dates and ideas around that. So I want to thank the technology and head secretaries for outlining that, um, getting that ready to roll out. And we'll make those formal announcements as soon as we've got them all formalized. But we're really, really close. 90% done, maybe. <coughs> so thank you. And as far as I know, we've touched on bonds over and over and over again. <coughs> we came out very well in our appraisal. Double A plus, is that correct? correct. And uh, bond sale went very well. Bond sale went very well. Uh, Valerie sitting on a pile of cash. <laughs> <laughs> it's already spent. <laughs> Would you like to see the book? <laughs> We've got some exciting things. We had the Riddle HVAC meeting. Uh, Terry Thornsbury shared that we're very, very close to setting down with the middle school to see the outline plans for that gym renovation. I know that they spent a few hours today over at the high school and the auditorium and he had some questions um, for me that we're starting to drill down on and again these plans are not set so there will be a time when we'll call Oscar and his team and Greg as part of athletics in and another time when I know we had some community members interested in the auditorium so we are we want to make sure that some of that groundwork is done and out of the way you can't uh, realistically expect everybody at that common table the entire the entire way through but once we have those definitive plans where you can see something we'll be having those common common meetings but so far going really well and our numbers are actually coming in lower than we thought which is good for us it gives us the opportunity to embrace a couple of other tasks any public comment mr house Next week is ISTEP at Riddle in the middle school. I know the middle school is going Tuesday to Friday next week. Your we're going to rock it all, all week. We're going to go uh, Monday through Friday. So, yeah. It's a good I know time. you guys, maybe it's not my place to say, so you guys hop in. I know 
it helps in you send these things out to parents, those encouraging notes to students, the good breakfast, the good night's sleep, the making sure they get plenty of time to relax and settle down. I know that's a lot. I know since our partners from the Sentinel and RTC4 are here, if you wanted to add anything, I know you sent things out to parents, but it never hurts. I know I have to make breakfast all next week. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's good. Good. Yeah. yeah, I'm a good breakfast maker. Yeah. Say so a prayer for Scott and his crew. Well, that's yeah. a great job. This year's gone. Knock on wood. Find don't, some wood. I know. I won't say any more, but they've done a great job. So thank you. Any public comment or questions for us? Is there any further business to discuss? Next case, we'll consider the meeting adjourned.